Hey guys, this is Wendy Ponomarenko with the San Diego Science and Education Channel. Uh, I wanted to highlight some things that have happened recently and that are coming up a little bit. Today is Family Activity Day, so I have some Pi Day activities uh, ready for ready for the family to do, ready for for anybody to do, so that they could have a, some wonderful math experiences with their family um, with Pi Day coming up. Here's a, a good way to to show your kids and your family how important math is. Here we go, though. Um, just yesterday, I spent some time over at the uh, first robotics competition. Uh, one of my children was in it. And I want to say uh, it was very cool. Uh, if anybody has a chance of, of encouraging one of their children to get into a, a robotics club or a robotics competition, it's, uh, the kids seem to have a great time. And if you're interested in robotics, they can always use help at the first, <laughs> at the first robotics competition. So definitely, I'm going to be including some links and some, some information for that, so make sure you check it out. We had a great time. Now, moving on, this Wednesday is Pi Day. That is 3.14, March 14th. So uh, in, in honor of this wonderful day coming up, uh, I wanted to, to bring in some, some different activities that you can do with your kids, math-based activities for Pi Day. Here we go. Now, uh, on the board behind me, I've, I've uh, created six, six circles that are cut into different pieces. These are just warm-ups. Um, most of the activities, actually, that we're going to be using are actually from NASA. The NASA website actually has a Pi Day challenge that they have done every year for the last four years. This is the fifth year they're doing it. And it's based on real problems that they've actually had to use Pi to solve in real-life space-oriented situations. Um, and they've got it set up in ways that um, grades about 6 to high school, 6 to 12, uh, can actually actually actively participate in and actually do some of these. And every year they put up these challenges, and then the day after Pi Day, March 15th, they put up the answers. So you can actually challenge yourself, challenge your family, uh, get some work together, and then, and then you get your chance to actually see how well you did the next day. So make sure you check that out. So first, we're going to do a warm-up. I have a couple of volunteers. Um, volunteer. volunteer. Here we have Jeff. Jeff. And <laughs> the Felix. The Felix. So Felix. Introduce ourselves. All right. So we're going to do some Pi Day activities. These are my, my wonderful Pi Day volunteers. And uh, here we go. So our first pie right here. Um, first, how many degrees are in a, are in a circle, guys? Three hundred and sixty. Three hundred and sixty. That's right. Good job. So there's three hundred and sixty degrees in a pie. This does not actually in the, in a circle. This does not actually use pie for the formula, but it's a good warm up. It's basic division. So here we go, guys. The first pie we have is cut into four pieces. Ninety degrees. 90 degrees. Wait, you know, okay, that's ninety degrees. You could wait till I finish that. <laughs> Question. Excellent. Okay. Yeah. Okay, the next pie is cut, is cut into three equal pieces. What are the degrees of each piece? 120, because isn't 360? 36? Yes, and so 360 you... divided by 3 is 120. Good job, this is my fourth grade. All right, this is my seventh grade. Okay, right. so this pie right here is cut into five pieces. What are the degrees if you cut a pie into five equal pieces of each piece? Think about it. 360 divided by oh, 5. 75? Not 75. 72. 72. Oh, there's someone 72. who remembers. 72. You were right. 72. You were right. 72. Good job. Okay. Now, this one's really easy. This pie, guys, this pie has been cut into six pieces. What are the degrees of each piece? Might it be 60? 60. It might be 60. It's a little it's easy. 36 plus 36. So, yes. 360 divided by 6 is 60. There we go. Good job, guys. So this next pie is cut into eight pieces. This is actually one of the more difficult ones. Um, so right here, eight pieces. Isn't that just half of one of those pieces? It is half of the 90 degrees. So shouldn't it be 45 degrees? Yes, half of 90 is 45. So each of these pieces would be 45. That is exactly right. Good right. job. Okay, and for the last pie we're looking at, in this particular case, 
the day you won, my wine won, my last one. This is cut into nine equal pieces. If you cut a pie into nine equal pieces, which is a little difficult, but we can manage it, uh, what are the degrees of each piece? Not 42 and a half. Not 42 and a half, no. 360 divided by 9. If you think it's oh, 40. 40, that's right. Good job, because 36 divided by 9 is Good 4. Job. So 360 divided by 9 would be 40. That's what I was thinking. Okay. So now we've got some circumference and some area, so we're actually going to be using pi. Here we go, guys. Are you ready? This pi has a radius of 2. Uh -huh. So the circumference... Okay, circumference, the formula for that is 2 pi r, so that's 2 times pi, which is 3.14. The radius okay, is the distance it. from the center of the pi to the edge. Okay, 6.18, 6.28, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 12, 5, 6. 12.56. There you go. Okay, guys, now we're using a workspace right here. This, in this case, is oh. the floor of our house. And uh, I've discussed with the boys some of the different NASA problems that are on the NASA website this year for Pie in the Sky 5, which is the Pie Day challenges that they've set up for this year. Uh, let me talk, tell you about some of the different ones they have up for this year. Okay, the first one, can I borrow yours? Mm -hmm. Okay, the first one is actually the. Uh, the solar sleuth, which is talking about um, exoplanets and how to find exoplanets because they, they cross in front of, they transit in front of their star, and they actually cause that star to dim a little bit, and you can actually measure how much the star has been dimmed based on that whatever planet has crossed in front of it, and from that you can figure out the size of the planet. Jeff has decided to work on this one. Jeff has decided to work on this one which is the solar sleuth. And then Felix has decided to work on the next problem, which is the helium heist, uh, which is talking about Jupiter. Yay! Go Felix. With a radius of 70,000, Jupiter is our solar system's most massive planet. About 10% of the volume from Jupiter's cloud tops is 20,000 kilometers below its helium, with the rest being mostly hydrogen. The circulation in this molecular hydrogen layer causes some of that helium to be depleted as it moves into the liquid metallic hydrogen layer beneath. The tremendous pressure inside Jupiter condenses helium into droplets that fall like rain through the less dense liquid metallic hydrogen. It rains helium on Jupiter. How cool is that? The presence of helium rain inside Jupiter helps explain why scientists observe less helium in the clouds than expected. If 10% of the helium volume in Jupiter's molecular hydrogen layer had been rained out since the planet formed, what is the volume in cubic kilometers that has rained out? Not bad. That's a pretty cool problem. So these are the two problems we're going to be working on. Interesting and awesome problems. All of them are ones that NASA actually had to use pi to solve during this year. So these are all real-life problems that were all used with pi. So here we go. Now we're going to, to work through this. That if you, I would suggest that if you have a dog, you might want to do this work on a table instead of on the floor. Hi. Okay, so Felix. Okay, back to this. Here we go. So Felix plugged in the, the 70,000 kilometers radius of Jupiter and the 50,000 kilometers of the inner radius and then found the volume of Jupiter as a whole and then the volume of the smaller part and then subtracted that part out. Sorry. And got, I didn't mean to poke you if I missed it. And then, <laughs> and then got about, uh, and then got about 913 trillion, 156 billion kilometers cubed. So there we go. And for the other part, if, so given, given the data from the Earth, here we go. Given that the Earth's radius is 6,371 kilometers, how many Earth-sized spheres of helium have been rained out? So then we figured out that part, 
and got okay, so ninety one trillion three hundred and fifteen billion six hundred million. Jeff had the exoplanet problem. So, uh, so how did you work your work through yours? Well, I solved it by when I first uh -huh, figured out was here, that right here. I needed to I needed to multiply the ratio or the percent drop in brightness by the disk area of the sun. That way, I could find the area of the planet. So I did that. I got one one hundred and seventy four thousand uh, million seven hundred and twenty thousand and then I realized that it asked for the radius not the area so then I I then fi figured out that the area that the, to, to find the radius I needed to, to find the square root of a over pi mm -hmm. and so I did that and I got seven Seventy-four th or seven thousand four hundred and fifty-seven point five five blah blah blah. Okay, and that's what All right. Well, very good. You were supposed to find the radius of the exoplanet known as Kepler one eight six f, and what you mm -hmm. found was the radius was seven thousand four hundred and fifty-seven point five five um, kilometers squared. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right. So there we go. Uh, these are some some challenging and yet family friendly activities on on uh, real life problems using Pi as an activity for Pi Day. If this is too advanced for your family, the warm up ones are a perfectly good one, and there's a lot of those you can come up with. Giving kids just basic circumference, finding the area, finding the degrees of a pie piece before you serve them a piece of pie on Pi Day. There's all kinds of wonderful things you can do. Enjoy Pi Day, Pi Day, have some wonderful math activities, and have a wonderful day.